Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about uh, the top five features I think Nintendo Switch 2 needs. Now, some of these features come on a Switch Pro. I don't know. We're not here to debate whether the Switch Pro or Switch 2 is coming, but the next generation Nintendo platform, these are the five things I think it needs. And if you end up enjoying this list, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel, drop a like, hit that bell icon to get notified of all the latest Nintendo news and obviously interesting videos such as this one. And let's get into that top five. We're starting out with a modernized online. So number five, a modernized online. So what do I mean by a modernized online? Well, first we have to recognize the issues that currently exist with Nintendo Switch's online service. This includes their entire subscription-based service. One, I obviously don't like paying to play online, but I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Obviously, there's the whole NSO thing and the inconsistencies. Uh, there's the fact that there's no localized voice chat and a whole bunch of things. So here's what I am talking about when I say a modernized online. I want to see things like achievements come to the platform. Now, again, you could argue that has nothing to do with online, but a lot of achievements actually deal with online elements. So I want to see achievements thrown in. I want to see um, Nintendo Switch Online, that service for retro games, separated out from the base paying to play online. And included in that base paying to play online, not only should just be, hey, you get access to play on games online, which again, I don't like paying for in the first place. You also should get features such as localized voice chat, localized messaging, the ability to do party chat. All of this should happen natively on Nintendo's next platform. No more phone app. Put all that feature and functionality directly into the Switch with additional functionality on top, including Nintendo's original idea for Switch, where you could actually set up groups that people could join to game with you later. You basically could set up play sessions. I want to see that idea fully fleshed out in a modernized Nintendo Online. Uh, so yeah, and now as for separating out Nintendo Switch Online, a lot of that's because I think it's an amazing service that really should stand on its own and doesn't need to be connected to the ability to play online. Now you might go, well, but Nate, the other programs have games of gold and stuff like that where they get bonuses. Yes, they do. I think Nintendo should keep a very, very cheap $20 per year plan for the, the ability to play online, separate NSO out into its own $20 to $30 plan per year, and just keep that as their retro game service. Now, you could offer a package deal, say, for $30 per year that gets you all the NSO stuff along with that. Obviously, I know they did tiers in NSO, so maybe it would be $40 per year, which you might go, but Nate, that's cheaper than what we pay now. You're right, but we get more features, more jam patch, and I think it's going to increase subscriptions. And besides, this is my top five list for features I want, not necessarily what Nintendo is going to do, because we all know Nintendo is going to do whatever they can do to price gouge. So yeah, I also would like to see them offer virtual console as a way to purchase those NSO games individually. Now, again, call me crazy for wanting these features, but this is my number five on the list, a modernized online experience. Number four, this is the only one on here that's specifically about the power of the system. So I'm not going to tell you what CPU, GPU combination I want or, you know, specs on the screen or any of that. But what I will tell you is while it's going to be a more powerful system, I want them to put a dock with it or at least offer a premium option to purchase a bundle with it that has a dock that has its own dedicated GPU for better docked gameplay. You remember an old patent Nintendo did where they talked about how there could be a additional compute device? And these exist. You can do these kind of um, mobile GPUs plugged into a laptop, and then you get additional performance and gaming out of it. I want to see them focus on some heavy CPU performance and even maybe a slightly cut back GPU compared to what they could be using when you're in handheld because you could dock the thing and get a much more powerful GPU experience and not just overclocking what's already in the Switch. And this is possible because, again, we've already seen this happen with laptop computers. So Nintendo obviously had a, a, a computing device patent at one point as well for this. So I want to see this idea actually return and see Nintendo go all out with it. It doesn't need to be the base package. You can still have your Switch Lite or Switch 2 Lite or your base Switch. But this could be like a premium $400, $500 option where, because you're paying for the ability to have a better docked experience. I like that. That would include the 4K and everything, which I think 4K would be there anyways. That's why I'm not really diving into it. But I, I want a, a dockable GPU experience. Uh, that's also a differentiator from things like uh, the Steam Deck and others that are still going to be limited by the thermals within it. You can have a beefier dock that's not as limited that can give you better performance. I think this would be amazing for the Nintendo Switch. Now, getting to my number three uh, most wanted thing for the, or the, the, the biggest thing I think it needs anyways for the next generation is better Joy-Con. 
And I'm going to tell you better Joy-Con in two specific ways. We can talk about ergonomics and all that. I, I don't really care that much about the ergonomics. I know a lot of you people do. Nintendo's trying to consider a ton of use cases for motion controls and turning them sideways. And look, honestly, a lot of the ways that we make our Joy-Con more ergonomic make it worse in some of those other use cases. So I'm fine with the ergonomics of the Joy-Con as they exist today. But there's two things I want to see change. Obviously, the, the, the joysticks, we need to get rid of Joy-Con drift. And I think the best way to do it is to just make those, those Joy-Con a little bit thicker and put a hall sensor in there like Ghoulie Kit has in their amazing Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So I want to see uh, that get added in, those hall sensors. They're really not that much more expensive, and they literally eliminate drift. And this would be a big selling point for Nintendo uh, for people to buy a new one saying, hey, we have a zero drift system. You could say that when you're using Hall sensors. And then I want to see them have a swappable button pad uh, that you can swap for a D-pad. Swappable controls have been a thing in controllers for quite some time, especially third-party controllers. So why not include the ability to have that the, the normal four buttons in case you want to play sideways, but be able to swap it to a D-pad for those that just want a local D-pad so you don't have to buy a third-party accessory or third-party Joy-Con or whatever to get that handheld portable D-pad experience. I just think that's just... just would be grand. It's maybe lower on the list, way lower than, say, joysticks. I'm not that big on if they do analog triggers or not. I think that obviously adds a point of failure for people that drop Joy-Cons. Uh, but I do think the hall sensing joysticks with a bit of a thicker Joy-Con and then a swappable D-pad would just pretty much make those controls perfect for most use cases. Number two, and this one might seem weird, but I want it to have a metal body. It could be some sort of magnesium alloy. It could be aluminum. I don't really care. It needs to be some sort of metal-based chassis. And I'm not talking about the inside that holds it. I'm talking about what's on the outside. I want it to be metal. And the reason is we have seen Switch over the years have a number of issues. We've seen the grill on the top where the heat is spewing out literally melt and break off and crack. And we, we've seen just a lot of issues with the Nintendo Switch shell not really being able to last and survive normal use. And you might go, well, my normal use is I keep it perfectly pristine in a case, never toss it around. It's always well protected. But most people just chuck it in their bag, leave it sitting around. Their kids might be a little bit rough with it. And honestly, the, 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 the chassis it's in is just susceptible to cracking and breaking and melting. We've seen so many examples of this. So I want to see a metal body. Uh, people have already been swapping in their own metal bodies on it over the years. So why not just throw it in there? It might make it more expensive, but it makes it a more premium uh, for the consumer. And that could obviously make Nintendo potentially charge more for this thing at launch. Uh, than $299. I'm not opposed to a $350 um, launch price for a brand new one if it, we're going to get a metal body included. The last thing I want to see as a brand new feature, or at least maybe an updated feature for the Nintendo Switch 2, is a completely overhauled eShop experience. My lord, is the Nintendo Switch eShop a hot mess. It is slow. It is clunky. It is hard to find anything that isn't directly featured by Nintendo. It is insane. And what I don't understand is there are so many other content platforms out there that do it better. So my number one most requested thing that I think this thing needs is a Netflix-style eShop. Netflix does it right with the suggestions and the promoting new content and third-party content, giving you the different categories, of changing up those categories, having lists that are there right there on the home. I don't even have to go to subcategories and you get a list of suggested content based on prior purchases and prior watch time. Nintendo is tracking all of our gameplay time. Nintendo is tracking all of our purchases. Use that data for a positive for the consumer. I know we always get mad about data being tracked. Well, Nintendo is tracking the data anyways. They're just not doing anything with it so do something with it heck hire the netflix engineers if you need to and have them come in and create you a proper eShop experience in fact if you could you know give us an eShop, you know a netflix style eShop experience you could actually have a better digital shop than playstation and xboxes those shops have their own issues as well. It's just Nintendo Switch is so far below them in terms of finding games and everything that, that it makes, you know, even talking about improvements on those systems a little strange when I'm a Nintendo YouTuber and ours is so crappy. So this is the number one thing I think the Nintendo Switch 2 needs. Now, obviously, this is just my 
personal top five list for the Nintendo Switch. And I'm really, really interested in what your guys' top five list would be. What things do you want to see? Uh, new hardware features, new software features. Obviously, you guys know that, you know, software is king and we can talk about the games. I didn't want to focus on the games. I wanted to just focus on the hardware and, and, and the system operability at this point. I'm totally fine with the operating system. You notice I didn't really talk much about themes or music. There's a whole lot of things that you guys might want for the next generation Nintendo Switch. So you guys let me know uh, which of those features or more that I'm not even thinking about, make your top five list. You guys are awesome, everyone. I hope uh, you had some fun with this video, and I'll catch you in the next video.